Welcome to God is Open. I am your host, Christopher Fisher. Today on God is Open, we're going to be talking about the Book of Life. The Book of Life, I got that pulled up here on the screen. If you see, the primary references throughout the Bible to the Book of Life are found in Revelation. Revelation singular, and by the way, I don't know if anyone says Revelations, but it's the, the revealing, the unveiling, the revelation, not Revelations. But the Book of Life is also found in Philippians 4. There's this a vague reference to it about names being written in the Book of Life. All the other references to the phrase Book of Life, there, there are various books throughout the Bible, uh, various names that are blotted in or written into books or taken away. And then there's these vague passages which perhaps are talking about names written in some sort of divine book, but we're, we're just not quite sure. So it seems like a common theme throughout the Bible that these divine books or book, singular or plural, we don't know, that these different books exist divinely. My favorite reference to a divine book is the Book of Remembrance in Malachi 3, end of the chapter. I'll let you guys look, look that up and uh, read it, but it's in the context, the direct context of the Calvinist's favorite proof text. I, the Lord, do not change, therefore you are not destroyed. It, it, this, their argument for perfect immutability, simplicity, everything, God doesn't change, and the direct context is a book of remembrance. And so re look that up, see how that functions, that's funny. But today we're just going to be talking about the, the citations throughout the book of Revelation of the book of life. What is it and how does it function? The first thing we're going to talk about uh, is the number of references in the book of Revelation. It may vary based on what translation you're using. Of course, I use the New King James for, for the New Testament when I'm dealing with the New Testament because the New King James is based off of the majority text, which I believe is more accurate than the critical texts. And for that, in Revelation 22:19, it says this, And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Believe it or not, this is a controversial book. If you turn to the ESV, it's not going to say that at all. Here's the ESV. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. So tree of life versus book of life. And that depends on what manuscripts are being used. If you want to see the textual support behind each of these various traditions, I would uh, really recommend this stepbible.org. And there's a variance application, where, which talks about the different variants of the different translations. As you see here, the Tree of Life is actually used in more versions. It's even used in the Byzantine, the majority text. So it's, it's kind of interesting why it's translated as Book of Life in the New King James rather than Tree of Life. But Byzantine, Westcott Hort, of course, uses Tree of Life. But there is manuscript evidence for Book of Life, and it makes more sense in context why it would be Book of Life. So you're not taking their part away from the tree, which doesn't quite make as much sense as taking away their part from the Book of Life, which is referenced earlier in the Book of Revelation by Jesus, which people can have their names blotted out of the Book of Life, despite what John Piper says, despite what John Piper says. But the Greek evidence for this, you could see the different manuscripts, uh, 296, uh, 2049, 2067. These are manuscripts that they have out there. Ambrose, this is found. Augustine, this is found. So there is textual evidence for Book of Life. And to me, it makes more sense. And so I'll stick with the New King James and their translation. But I understand, and it is legitimate, people who think that's not the actual translation. Uh, I will accept your arguments, but this is the one I think is better. All right, let's talk real quick about uh, the use of the Book of Life throughout the book of Revelation. The first reference we come across is Revelation 3.5, which is in the red letters. This means this is a quote by Jesus. Remember, Jesus is appearing to John in this vision and that he has while he's in Patmos. And Jesus appears and he says this, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. So what does that mean? What does that mean? It's an if-then-else conditional, if you're familiar with computer programming. If this happens, then this will happen else something else happens. And so what's the if then else? If you overcome, then I won't blot out your name or else I will. Or else I will. That, that's the else going on here. Very clearly, your name can be blotted out of the book of life. 
that's how these books work throughout the Bible. Names are blotted out all the time. This, this, there's, there's strong textual support for this, especially in the words of Jesus. So what do the Calvinists say to that? They say, oh, never mind that. Never mind the if-then-else conditional. Focus on that second phrase. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Eternal security. Eternal security. It, it's like, Calvinist, Calvinist, you're forgetting something. You're forgetting the very first part of the verse, which sets this up as an if-then-else conditional. If you don't believe me that Calvinists do this, let's turn real quick to John Piper, one of the Calvinists' favorite preachers, pastors, John Piper. He, he writes this, The promise, I will not erase his name from the book of life, does not necessarily imply that some do have their names erased. It simply says to the one who is in the book and who conquers in faith, I will never wipe out your name. In other words, being erased is a fearful prospect which I will not allow to happen. <laughs> I will keep you safe in the book. That is one of the promises made to those who persevere and conquer. Yeah, it's not made to those who don't persevere. You missed the first part of that. This is not about preservation of the saints or anything like that. Basically, it's saying... Um, I'm coming back soon. Uh, you should persevere to the end. If you don't, there's going to be consequences. But remember, if you do persevere, you're going to face a lot of persecution. You're going to face a lot of hardships. There, there is a good ending for you. I will make sure that your name is still in this book. So persevere and I won't let you down. This is a statement of, of faith in God, giving us assurance. But it's also uh, it, it's also a warning. It's also a warning to those who don't persevere. That's what this is. And John Piper's like, ignore the if-then-else conditional. Let's focus on the preservation of the saints stuff because that kind of fits our theology. And then, then let's look at what he does. And here's his support for this. He says this, In fact, there are two other verses in Revelation that seem to teach that to have your name written in the book means that you will most definitely persevere and conquer. There are? There's, there's those two references somewhere? Ah, oh, pray tell, wh where are these references, these magical references that definitely exist? He says, Consider Revelation 13.8, And all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. This verse implies that those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world, he puts that in quotes, from the foundation of the world, definitely will not worship the beast. In other words, having our name in the book of life from the foundation of the world seems to be that God will keep you from falling and grant you to persevere in allegiance to God. Being in the book means you will not apostatize. What? What? Okay, okay. Let's, let's deal with these verses. This... This is actually a pretty common claim, and it's based on just appalling misreadings of the text. Just, just really bad. Let's take this uh, phrase by phrase, because you, you can't have to read a verse in context. You kind of <laughs> need to understand what's going on. And it starts with this, 17.8. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. That's an interesting phrase in itself. That's the subject of a different podcast. But there's a parallel statement in Revelation about Yahweh, that Yahweh was and is and is to come. And the beast was and is not and will be. That, that they're parallel concepts. That they're, they're referring to the same concept. And so if you want to make one about timelessness, you got to do something with that other one. They're not about that. But going on, and those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Okay, whose names are not written. So this is about names not written in the book of life. Nothing in here about names written in the book of life. Yeah, we could assume there are names written in the book of life, but we don't know from that phrase when they were written. Because it's not about names which were written. It's about names which are not written from the foundation of the world. Calvinists are always like, there are names written before the foundation of the world in the book of life. They have, they have nothing. There's no verse anywhere that says that. All, all their proof texts are about names which have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And, and notice what I just did there. I, I used two different phrases. Names written before the foundation of the world. Calvinists believe that. They, they actually believe that the names are eternal, like there's an eternal list that transcends time, and that's this internal book. But they often quote this as saying, not written in the book of life 
before the foundation of the world. The word is not that. The word is apo. The word is from. And from functions differently than before. Before means that there's this point in time and whatever action happened was prior to that time. Whereas from or since is saying that th this action happened since whatever period of time or from this period of time. And we see that throughout the Bible, this use of this word from the foundation of the world. Luke 11.50, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. The, which this is not, this is definitely not saying that all these prophets were killed before the foundation of the world. They were killed eternally. There's this eternal killing of all the prophets. No, it's not that. It's just saying you take the foundation of the world and you sum up everything between all the prophets which died between the foundation of the world and now, add it together, and that's all the blood. So it's since, it's from, it's not before, it's not this eternal shedding of blood. It's from or since the foundation of the world. So names per revelation, let's go back to revelation. The names which are written in the book of life are from the foundation of the world or since the foundation of the world. It's, it's a dynamic book which names are added after the foundation of the world. And you could sum up all those names since the foundation of the world. It's saying all the people whose names have been added since the founding of the world, foundation of the world, that, that's an interesting phrase itself, those are the names who aren't going to be worshiping the beast. And does that uh, imply that names can't get blotted out or that blotted out names are going to be included in this list of people not worshiping the beast? No, it's not. It, that, that doesn't imply it at all. Let's figure out where the apostate falls. There's a name written in the book of the life. It's scratched out of the book of the life. And then will they marvel? Well, technically their name was written in the book of life at some point. Maybe they won't marvel. That, that's not a problem for anyone's position here. But uh, is that the sense of this verse or is this a generality? Just saying, you know, we understand that their name was written in and scribbled out. They'll probably marvel as well. Or maybe since they were at one time a Christian or a believer, they won't marvel. They'll say, ah, this makes sense. That doesn't mean they're safe. That doesn't mean they're elect. That doesn't mean apostates can't exist. That's reading too much into this verse. John Piper just mutilates this verse. He wants there to be an eternal list of names written before the foundation of the world, a timeless list, a, a list that's never written ever. It's an eternal list of names, and it's everyone who's ever going to be saved, and it's not functioning like Revelation describes. Jesus says names are blotted out. Revelation 17.8 says names are added since the foundation of the world. Those are the implications by the wording. And then on top of all of that, it, it doesn't, it's not even about names which are, are written in the book of life. It's, it's not just not about that. Contextually, this does not support what John Piper wants. He wants to use this verse. He wants to use this verse to undo what Jesus says. It, but in fact, it's, it's counter evidence against what John Piper says. The reference we skipped over is Revelation 13, 8. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We already talked about this phrase, from the foundation of the world. And people will take this phrase. In spite of Revelation 17, 8, the exact same phrase, from the foundation of the world, being in reference to the names which are not written, names that are not written, not written, names that are written, names that are not written, They'll, they'll turn to Revelation 13, 8, and then apply that prepositional phrase to the lamb slain. They'll say, Jesus was eternally slain, even though it's from, uh, apo, it's not pro, not before the foundation of the world, anything like that. So, oh, this, this is a huge, huge stretch. What they want is some sort of this, this concept of this eternal sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus is timeless, and his sacrifice is outside of all temporal reality is what they're going for. But it, it, the prepositional phrase just doesn't apply to the lamb slain. The prepositional phrase applies to the same thing it does in 17.8. It doesn't even make sense. The lamb slain since the foundation of the world doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So it applies also to the names which were not written. Just like it does in 17.8, they're not changing subject matter. They're not slipping in this new concept that will say, oh, look at this this vague little phrase. Oh, that means it's a very specific niche thing that I made up in my own mind. It's not what's going on here. It's common sense. This, this, is, this is easy to read and easy to understand. We don't want to complicate it with these weird metaphysical concepts. 
that are just not even implied in the text. They're not there. Real quick, the foundation of the world, that has been translated in multiple ways as well. Doing word studies on foundation, it's used throughout uh, Greek literature as building, and world is used mostly to talk about like a good order or cosmos. It's, it's used often in the New Testament to refer to all of creation or the world. So what this is referring to, maybe it's referring to the creation of the universe, could be doing that. Also could be referring to the downfall, the flood, because the foundation could be a casting down, a casting down of the cosmos, or it could be a building up. So it could be the flood or post-flood, the recreation of the earth. So there's all these different points of times that this could refer to. Uh, we're not quite sure what it does refer to. All we can do is look to other uses of foundation of the world within the New Testament and then give our best guess on what John in Revelation was referring to. And it's, it's, not, it's not necessary that he agrees completely with the same use of the phrase used in different authors, if that makes sense. He might be referring to something different. But we need to do our due diligence with these verses and just not assume meaning onto these phrases. The next reference to the book of life is 2012. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. The books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. So the book of life may or may not have the details of people's individual lives, or maybe this uh, divine book of the book of life is being bounced against other books which do record details of lives. So you compare their lives to the list of names. Something like that's going on in Revelation 2012. 2015, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So having your name not in this book gets you cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21, 27 is the next reference. It says this, But there shall no means enter it, it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is in reference to this new kingdom of God that has been established on earth in context, in context of Revelation 21, 27. The heaven and earth have this merging process. The kingdom of God comes down. God reigns on earth, physically on earth. He rules over the world and uh, promotes justice. And out of this uh, king city, this, this, there's this capital city of Jerusalem from which God rules and reigns. And this suggests that there's going to be still people on earth whose names aren't in the book of life. This initial purging either didn't kill everyone or did kill everyone and new people have arose who na whose names are not in the book of life or there's people who fell away and now they're not allowed into the city. And th there's not this second purging perhaps. That's, that's probably what's going on here. There's an idea throughout Jewish apocalypticism that the Jews would be a priest nation and all the Gentiles would bring their tribute to Jerusalem. And, uh, and basically the Jews would reign as a priest slash king type people, which makes sense. So in this new world, there might be evil people. They, there might be more instant justice, but these evil people or bad people or non-Yahweh worshipers might still exist and function in society, and but they won't they won't be allowed in the city, according to Revelation 21, 27. Then of course the last reference is Revelation 22, 19, Book of Life, which could be the Tree of Life, depending on which version version, translation, manuscript you prioritize. So that's a quick and dirty overview of the Book of Life. <laughs> The Book of Life functions in a dynamic sense. Names are added, names are removed. And it's not this eternal list of names from before the foundation of the world. It's names that are continually added and subtracted. And this is a concept you th see throughout the Bible. Moses pleads to God that if you're going to blot their names out, blot my name out as well, which could be a reference to the Book of Life. Might be another divine book, maybe a book of people who are living, something like that. But the concept is there. Last thing I want to touch on is the Shepherd of Hermes, which has a reference to the Book of Life. This is extra biblical literature, was considered canonical by some early Christians, probably before 100 AD this was written. And let's, let's see whose rendering of the Book of Life that the Shepherd of Hermes agrees with. Mine or John Piper's? Mine or John Piper's? Where's your money on? Where's your money on? This is a divine figure talking to Hermes and it says this, Cease not therefore to reprove thy children, 
For I know that if they shall repent with all their hearts, they shall be written in the book of life with the saints. It's a dynamic list. It's a dynamic list. This is well attested. It's, I, I don't know how the Calvinists hold on to this fiction that this, there's an eternal list of names that exists. Revelation, the book of life, disproves Calvinism. A dynamic list of the elect shows that elect is a corporate body or the, the salvation is a corporate thing rather than individual specific. All right. I hope you like this uh, short podcast. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, start a thread. If you have any questions, thank you for listening. <laughs>